Hey guys, Sportnet is here. Welcome back to another Game Maker Studio tutorial. Um, today, um, I want to actually progress further with the button system, which I was working on in the last video. Um, now, yeah, first thing I'm going to do, I'm actually going to... I'm just going to save this under a different version number so that I don't want to screw up any previous versions. Um, but, yeah, I have actually altered some things from the last tutorial with this button system. Um, in the main menu object, we've got obviously OBJ menu controller. Now, that initializes variables and stuff, and it also creates instances of buttons now. So, if I look in the room tab and look at the menu main, I don't actually have any buttons in here. Um, and literally all I've done, I've got this object here, um, OBJ menu controller, that's the only object in the room. Um, and then if I double click this, it's got a create event and this is some of the things that it does. Now, it creates some global variables here um, and then assigns them to instances. So I can actually determine which specific button is assigned to a certain job. So we've got button play, a global button player, and then it sets the button type to zero. So um, obviously we covered that in the previous like, tutorial. However, what I did, um, I actually changed this in the creation code of the object, but it's more efficient to do it this way because, um, yeah, as we're switching between the main menu and the options menu, um, we're going to need to set that variable even though it's not an instance of, like that's already in the room to begin with, if that makes sense. So, um, but yeah, today um, I'm just going to show you where we're at. Um, I, ha I do actually have like a, a small options menu and it is working now, um, but I'm going to be implementing one other feature and that is um, texture interpolation. So, um, what texture interpolation does, um, it actually, it estimates the colour of a pixel based on pixels nearby in an essence. So yeah, this is the main menu. Um, obviously you've got play, options, quit. Um, options brings up another menu. Um, I'll just turn full screen off so I don't, I don't know if you can actually see the game like in full screen mode. But um, yeah, I've got full screen button, um, FXAA, that's anti-aliasing, so you can change that from 0, 2, 4 and 8. Uh, V-Sync as well, we've got that. Um, and then, yeah, I want texture interpolation as a feature in it as well, so um, if we go back, quit. Uh, first thing we need to do, we need to go to the, um, yeah, the button event, and then go to, let's just close this, go to left release, sorry, yeah, and then under button type 3, uh, this is the one button which actually goes from the main menu to the options menu. So, um, we're going to create another global variable and it's going to be called global uh, button. Um, oh, wait, hang on, I'm doing it in the wrong event. That's going back from the options menu to the main menu. We want this one go to the options menu. So, what it does, it destroys any instance of a button and then it creates all the option buttons um, and when, when you click back it destroys them instances and then creates all the play buttons again and stuff. Um, so yeah, let's just copy that code and then we're going to paste it in there and yeah, I'm going to set this to global setting underscore uh, texture inter... oh, I, I, if I can spell it right, interpolation so um, we're going to copy and paste that and then yeah what I'm doing here because we've declared this button type variable actually in the instance of obj button um, it, the global variable knows what it's referencing because it's referencing that specific uh, variable in that one instance so um, we can set button type to 7 because it's a new one and then we need to set the height to 900 and yeah, then we need to create, uh, there's one more thing we need to do actually, let's just copy and paste this. Um, because we're referencing the variable here, um, we need to initialize it first to begin with. So um, we're going to go here in the create event of the menu controller, which I've created as an object, and set the variable to naught. Um, just so it knows uh, the location 
of the actual draw event text um, because the text um, uses the button to locate the actual location of the like, where it should draw the text but if it doesn't know where to draw it then it'll throw an error so we need to initialize that variable and tell it that it doesn't exist beforehand um, and then yeah that shouldn't cause any issues now um, yeah let's go back to this so the button type is 7 um, we need to go down here and then type another else if statement so set the texture interpolation I'll just spell that wrong again and yeah then we need to create a new line I'm going to actually bring this window up a bit so you guys can see it as well right so we don't need that actually um, else if so so it's carrying on from the initial statement if button type is 6 um, if button type is equal to 7 then we need to um, we need to actually create another variable in the settings object uh, this is an object that I've declared in my game it may be different to yours so or depending on what you're doing with the button um, but if I go to the um, I'm just trying to think where I've, I think it's in the initialization. yeah there we go settings so what this does is just stores information about the actual game configuration um, so we've got vsync interpolation um, anti-alias and then full screen so see yeah, I've already actually created the variable so we can just use that um, at the moment it's set to true so what that will do that will actually interpolate the pixels between each other um, and then it'll give you a better contrast but if you turn that setting off it actually it, like, it increases the FPS a lot so that's the reason why I'm into implementing it sorry. Um, we need to go and go hang on a minute if obj underscore settings so we're referencing that variable in the object uh, dot interpolation equals true um, and then yeah, obj settings input. I don't know, I'm just thinking actually. There's actually a much easier way of doing this. Um, I've only used this statement here because that's the anti aliasing function. Um, but all we can do, if I paste that back in, obj underscore settings dot interpolation. Um, and then because it's a true or false variable it can only be two things like true or false so all we can do is equals not obj settings interpolation so what that's going to do uh, that's going to invert the variable and then it's going to set it from false if it's true and then well yeah set it to false if it's true and then set it to true if it's false if that makes sense so um, yeah and then once we set that variable we need to actually configure it to load that variable as a setting like for the interpolation itself and I believe um, it's um, a function uh, texture underscore set underscore interpolation there we go and then it's going to open a bracket and we could have, well yeah, we could just put true or false in here but uh, what we want to actually do is set it to the variable and yeah, if we do that, like that so I'm just going to put common in there as well set the interpolation and then that is going to be get the interpolation setting like that right then so that's that set up now um, and yeah that should be fine so um, all we need to do now is actually make it draw text now um, I actually created a font the other day um, and it's got 26 characters so um, if I go in obj menu font and draw that's the object which draws the text. Um, it actually it checks if a specific instance of the button exists and then draws the text relative to that object 
for representing on what what instance it actually is. So I just want to check where that brace ends. I believe it's that one. Yeah. So then we need to do. Uh, you may not need to do this. This is just purely for the text in my game. But um, button setting interpolation. Let's spell it wrong. Let me make sure it's right. There we go. Right, and then it needs to check if the button exists. So if it doesn't, don't draw it. Um, and then let's just copy that variable. Um, if obj settings dot interpolation equals false, draw text. So basically we'll just copy the code from that um, and then edit it. So initially it actually sets uh, the text to black so it creates a shadow. Um, and then we can do button setting interpolation. Like that. Button setting interpolation. Just copy the code. I'll actually expand that so you can see what, all, what it's doing. Um, and then that's a draw text function, so we need to set that to um, off. I haven't actually made a space yet, so um, I can't actually put spaces on the text yet. <laughs> but. Um, I just wanted to make a functional font, so um, and then we can do else. It just needs to do the opposite now, so interpolation equals true. So we can just change that to on, like that. And then we need to close off the brackets. Like so, and now we're done. Right, okay, so that should be okay now. And if we run the game, we should have a working texture interpolation button. I will set the window to not full screen as well, so you can see it as well, just in case. Okay, so it's not actually drawing the text, I don't know why. Um, Let's just interpolation and grid type. Expecting a number. Hmm. Okay, so that's an issue actually. Um a ball. That's actually quite surprising because I thought it would be a true or false variable. Um settings. Yeah, it's under left release. Let's just have a look at this function. Oh wait, it's because I've been stupid here. OBJ settings dot interpolation. There we go. Um, and then we also need to figure out why it's not drawing that text. So um, don't be under the menu font event. Oh, it's because of settings of our right. Okay, so then let's go to the button event left release. And then that should be correct, I believe. Um, we're going to change that as well. So it's just interpolation instead of texture interpolation. It's because um, I didn't actually use the right reference variable. But yeah, anyway, sorry about that. I think we've done it now. <laughs> go to the options menu. So yeah, we got it working so interpolation is on, interpolation off. Oh, obviously I'll have to change the font size in this button. Um, I might actually decrease it full stop anyway so it's a bit too big but um, yeah so we've got texture interpolation working in the game so I'm going to turn it off and actually go back and then play the game because you should be able to tell um, oh yeah, and you can definitely tell. Um, so what it's using, it's actually using the true colours of the pixels. 
um, to draw them on the screen. Um, but when the setting is actually turned off, what it'll do, um, it sort of estimates in between them. Um, so if I go play again, oh wait, I'm just hang on, I turned it off. Okay, it's about to play. Yeah, you, you can definitely tell the difference with what. I'll actually, I'll enlarge it in the video editing. Um, but yeah, you can tell the difference, and obviously, if I press F3, um, and also, yeah, notice I'm getting about a thousand frames a second right now. Uh, but if I go and turn that off, and then go back and play F3 again. So, um,. I'm actually getting less frames a second with the interpolation turned off, which is quite strange, but um, yeah, anyway, that has been a, a short tutorial about, like, about getting options and stuff working in your game. Um, yeah, I'm making quite a lot of progress with Exascape now. Um, I do intend to actually start uploading on my other YouTube channel specifically for the game soon. Um, and I'm also going to start being active on social media and stuff with different accounts, etc. I also want to try live streaming the game quite often, like the development process of it, so people can like join in the development and like suggest ideas and stuff. So, um, but yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this video, everyone. Uh, make sure to hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not already. And uh, of course, peace out. I will catch you in the next one. <laughs> Uh, creation curve, what it is, it essentially executes curve for more specific uh, and it occurs when the number of matches are flat and they all get to create a number. So, if you go to the bottom the creation curve,